for you to even sit there out your mouth to tell me that I have a lack of respect for a looking glass. That was the straw that, that was the, 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 the panic attack I had of a managerial position, if not one of the owners. Had the nerve to tell me that I had no respect for looking glass. I had a lack of respect for the place that I was going to to escape the reality that my entire world is falling apart. What are you talking about? Like literally, the last moment I even spent with my mother. Oh, I'm sorry, Ma. I gotta go to work. She can't. Like honestly, that sits in my brain more than anything. Because how could I have been so stupid to not even have the awareness to know, like, this might be her last moment? Because she's in the bed. Like, I mean, we just got her situated after having so many issues with finding, like, a, a nursing home for, for her to stay in. The current nursing home that she's staying in is, is, is like, is lacking in all, all dimensions of the care that they've we're promising to, to give her. We're paying them thousands of dollars. I'm paying them thousands of dollars. Doctor's office right now. You know, my surgery right now. Scalpel. I need a... What is the name of this sneaker? Uh, if I believe these are called up tempos, um, nice little Nike Air. I don't know when the shoe was released. I can't tell you that. I just uh, so happened to stumble across this shoe while I was uh, shopping for uh, new footwear, and I saw it. I was like, I like this design. I like the whole, you know, snake skin, zebra skin. You got the cheetah skin on that side. You got some more little different, I think this alligator or some shit. I don't know what the fuck this black thing is. Might be a Komodo dragon, maybe. I don't know. But I was just like, man, I like this design. And I purchased the shoe. I don't wear it that often, but the last time I wore it, it was at like a concert, which I regret because you, as you can see, the bottom of these drums are gone to hell. But I had a great time. Yeah, these are up to those. And these are my, uh, I want to say, third or fourth favorite pair of shoes I own. It's because of the design and style of it. Yes, yeah, sir. What do I look for in a good shoe? Um, sometimes, oftentimes, I look for like a very like monotone look. Sometimes I like to wear shoes that are you know multicolor, but I prefer like monochrome, like. Normally, I have lots of shoes that are either all black or all white. They might have like a the Vans design or something like that, you know, of the shoe. But I like very, um, you know, straightforward. But I also enjoy like how comfortable shoes can be because I never knew that Jordans were as comfortable as they were until I bought a pair of Jordans and I have the um, the the retro six hairs which was a Bugs Bunny uh, release of the Retro Sixes for the Space Jam movie. And um, yeah, if, if, when I put my foot in those shoes, bro, it was almost as if like I never wore a shoe. Like, <laughs> I stood up and I was like, why is this so comfortable? Why Why does it feel like I'm floating? Is this what Jordan was doing when he was on the court? When he was in Toontown? 
fighting against the monsters. Like, <laughs> but nah, mostly in the shoe, it's gotta be like comfortability. Uh, I also bartend, so I'm always on my feet when I'm at work. So that also is another factor of the shoe that I kind of look for to, uh, for it, you know, fulfilling because if it's a comfortable shoe, I can wear it while I'm at work and not have to uh, destroy my feet walking up and down the bar. But still, you know, feel like I'm stylish when I leave work because I don't want to look like I just left uh, Costco. You know how they got those um, generic brand black shoes everybody wears in the service industry. Yeah, I don't want to look like somebody's uncle leaving work, right? You want to look stylish even before and after. So those things kind of take into uh, consideration when I'm, you know, shoe shopping. Though I don't shop for shoes like that. Let me just clear that up right now. I'm not a shoe shopper. It's normally when I'm out and I see things that I like, I'm like, oh, I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and um, add that to my collection. But uh, so yeah, comfortability, style, and function. How about that? I think that's a nice way to concise. ASMR is real. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is kind of how I brush my teeth. I go up and down and back and forth. You know, you gotta do circles. But you can see how like this bottom level of Nefaric gas is just not leaving the shoe. I think I might need to get like a bleacher or something. Wow. Lord of mercy. I've definitely done a number on this. I don't know if these can be saved. Lord. I mean... Um, hmm. Am I a detailed oriented person? I definitely will admit that I def I sometimes don't have patience for like too many details for for real. But I am a fan of creativity to this to the point where I can definitely say pause. You know, what am I missing here? Let me appreciate what's going on. But um, more often than not, yeah, I, you know, my brain doesn't really sit in one place at one time. So sometimes I could definitely overlook, you know, a couple of things. Like details aren't my main focus. I like to look at the bigger picture, especially like, you know, looking at the entire picture of the shoe. It's a great shoe. But then there are some details that it's hard to miss. You know, those are the details I see. But the ones that are like very seamless and, you know, meticulously snuck in there, sometimes I, I miss it. You know, you go, you know, like you listen to your favorite song and then you hear that one part in the song that you didn't know that it was there. It's like, oh, I didn't know there, there was flutes in the back right here. <laughs> like that. I have those moments a lot. <laughs> like, trust me and believe. It would be a lot of moments I'll listen to them. It would be my favorite song for the week, like of the week. This is my favorite song of the week. Then the next week I'm listening to it again. I'm like, wait, did he just say that? Damn, I didn't even pick that up the entire time. I'm gonna go to the... See that? It's a difference. It's a very big difference. Try the stuff out on the bottom, see how it works Let's out. See. I just know it's a lot of gunk right here. I don't wanna Hey, do what you gotta do. Alright. Thank you, boss. I appreciate you for giving me space to to lash out. Need 
steel brush for this. How would I describe anxiety? I would describe anxiety as deep-rooted fear of the future. Um, I'm not going to say that we all have psychic powers, but we do have intuition. And sometimes that intuition can be like pointing a gun at yourself because your intuitive thoughts might not always be positive. And I think that's what anxiety is because you kind of can see a pattern that will have a certain outcome. And because you're afraid of the outcome, you may, you know, it, it might just rest in your mind resting in your mind, you know, it'll fester. And sometimes that anxiety can get the best of you. I don't know. Like anxiety in itself just happens to be this great space in your brain where you're just unsure of what will happen. So you think of all the other different outcomes of, you know, of a, any given scenario. And, um, I mean, it's not always bad. I'm not gonna say anxiety is 100%, you know, detrimental, but from the, outs from the outside looking in, anxiety can show up in, in, in times where one would need to be courageous and or stoic. Um, yeah, it's just a collection of different thoughts that, you, you know, of outcomes of the future that you can't control. It's like, wow, I don't know if I'm going to ace this test. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to uh, make it to work on time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sit throughout this entire funeral. I'm not sure if I'm going to. Um, if my, my baby mom's just gonna do this, I'm not sure if my baby dad is gonna do this, I'm not sure if my my mom's gonna like if I come home like this, I'm not sure if my whatever, you know, and because of that unsurety, is this gum? It's a gummy substance, though. That's where anxiety kind of takes place, in my, in my eyes, in my definition, in my opinion to say the least. Um, oh, we can scrape shit out, okay. Have I learned how to overcome my anxiety? Um, I guess the honest answer is no, but I definitely work hard in managing it because I definitely you know, have moments where, um, I mean, bro, keep a buck with you. All the way up until my mom passed away, I've been living in anxiety. There was really no overcoming it because it was like a constant reality. I was never sure when it was gonna be my mom's last day and in the beginning, it was easy because it was like, wow, boom, you know, she just survived this life-threatening ordeal. And, you know, the doctors are saying they don't know, you know, what brought it on. 
if it's like you know a uh, cholesterol thing if it's a dietary issue if it's hereditary if it's something they don't they don't have any clue but what they what clue they did have was how to save her life and they did the best of their abilities i'm grateful but then afterwards you know there were a lot of meetings i've had with her doctors where they're just telling me things that I don't know. I don't even know how to make sense of it. Like, yeah, she has this uh, leakage in her brain that's causing X, Y, and Z. Because X, Y, and Z is happening, she's unable to perform certain motor tasks properly, or she's unable to um, remember things as well as she used to. She's unable to, you know, speak or use her speech in ways that she, you know, knows how to because. It was just a, a, a big jambalaya <laughs> of, of shit going on in her brain. And all that shit is just excess coming out of her own spine. It's just like excess spine fluid coming out of her spine leaking into her brain cavity. And they're telling me this, and I'm just sitting there like... What? So what does this mean? Like, how do we stop this? What, you know, what's, the, what's the process? You know, they'll give me a, a couple solutions. They'll tell me, oh, yeah, she might need to get a spinal tap. She might need to have this done. Or, you know, she might just have to deal with the fact that within the span of six months, she lost her ability to walk. Like, June, July, she's on her feet walking. We do daily walks across, like, around our apartment building to like fetal position curled up can't even stand up out of a chair so it's like there'll be days I wake up like damn you know I wonder what's gonna happen today I wonder what what new issue we gotta overcome today or you know but I've always had the responsibility and like duty at the top of my head pretty much keeping me from faltering of letting that anxiety take over and immobilizing me because I knew that if I was useless to my mom at this point in her life then I was going to be useless to any and everybody else so um, overcoming anxiety definitely is not something that I am a master but um, I've definitely had times where I've had the greater motivation to not let anxiety like immobilize me. Because if I don't move now, then I'll, I'll be more upset of what happens next. And that anxiety was way worse. Like the, ang the anxiety of me having to live the rest of my life knowing that I was useless during this most like critical point in her life. That is what like literally woke me up every morning, every day. Like, nah, I gotta make sure this bitch okay. I gotta make sure this lady's okay. I gotta do whatever I gotta do. You know, sometimes it would it would hurt knowing that I gotta go to work. And like during the later years of like the whole process, you know, it's 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 like she grew to be my child. Like, like this is my own mother. She, she's the one that raised me. She changed my diapers. Now I'm changing her diapers. I'm giving her baths. I'm, you know, cleaning up her shit, type shit. And it's like, wow, look how the 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 turntables. Maybe personally for me, I was thinking this is a test from God. Like, if I can't if I can't overcome this test, then the the tests in the future, you know might be even more difficult and I may you know succumb and just give up I'm like damn this is hmm? yeah I'm trying to make sure I you know don't cut myself but I want to secure this thing before I get to the next shoot thank you let me do that <clears throat> but yeah um, anxiety is a very complicated thing to describe especially when um, there's like certain things that happen in your life that's just outside of your control. 
So I I definitely don't want to. <laughs> I definitely will say don't sleep on anxiety because that shit can fester. But at the same time, it can be, it can be like you know motivation. It could be life fuel. Like damn, I don't want to continue living this life. Or damn, I don't want to keep going through these same situations. Damn, I don't want to end up like this in the future. That type of anxiety can even motivate you and push you in you know the right direction. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's like it's it's, it's very complicated to describe. Like you know that whole phenomenon. <laughs> Cause that shit, I don't know, bro. Like, oh yeah, go ahead, throw some more in there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, am I anxious now? Is anxiety something that I deal with in today's landscape? Now that we're in 2024, no. Um, I've definitely come into a lot of situations, especially um, work-wise, where I'm confident in knowing, okay, at least I can afford to keep a roof over my head. I have no reason to be anxious about that. Boom. Um, next thing, as long as what I'm doing at work is fulfilling, I don't have any anxiety of like going to work because I like what I do I like going to work I like bringing people together having a good time showing people an experience and even on the other side at my other job I enjoy the whole like the the craft part of it like niggas is making all types of wild cocktails with fig puree and passion fruit purees and we got all this type of all these different like I, I feel like a florist when we set up like I got a <laughs> sort all these flowers together put them in these little things just so that we can be set for if anybody orders a cocktail we can make the cocktail garnish it properly the way that it was supposed to be garnished and people take pictures they put on the instagram wow this is so cool oh my god i can't believe you guys are doing this this is amazing oh you god they got me featured in this um content creators instagram page when she when uh, she came through uh she came through Vera to do a little little video. It was like, yeah, it's gotta be Io, you know. It's, <laughs> it's, it, he's the most attractive. <laughs> it's gotta be Io. And I'm saying like, nah, y'all, y'all don't need to do that. But you know, it's that aspect of it. You know, I wouldn't experience anywhere else, or at least at the level that I started, I wouldn't have experienced it there. But just that is also proof of showing the length of like you know how far i've come like damn niggas used to be bringing ice from 7-eleven all the way back to vavala <laughs> like, he used to run the guys <laughs> like come on like niggas go way back and that in itself you know i guess helps me overcome anxiety and certain you know aspects of my life especially when it comes to like knowledge of self confident and this is what i'm doing this is what i you know this is where i work this is how i work this is how i get down i go to I go to another state go to another country oh what do you do i'm a bartender i bartend here bartend at these spots this down the third give them the whole spiel They're like oh wow that's cool man i want to come by you know stop by one time like yeah and they do they see it. it's like oh this is a great place i mean even the duality of both of the places I work at. You have Looking Glass, which is a dive bar. You have Vera, which is like this high-end, like, like fusion experience between Lebanese and Mexican cultures. Uh-huh. Yeah, it used to be, <laughs> it used to be Big Chief. And like, yo, there's so many black people come in there like, yo, this place used to be Big Chief. And honestly, I feel like a griot in there because I'm not, I'm one of the very few people that know that this place used to be Big Chief. And I, <laughs> like to be even able to to be put in the position to even tell that history to any passerby that comes in there it's like wow you know they really got this place hooked up I'm like yeah did you know this place used to be big chief <gasps> what big chief what I, I, like, the way that conversation goes is always heartwarming because like big chief was a big thing like it wasn't 
we had there's many different events that even um, me and some of my friends we had like a a beer pong tournament in there, uh, white Christmas do rags, all, all the different you know events that that happens in there, and we've all experienced that same you know come like enjoyment of life. And then now it's gone. It's a memory now, like velvet. Like you know how many people come in the looking glass and be like, "Damn, bro, this might jaw like be the new velvet." Like <laughs> this might jaw like, and and people have been saying that for so many different places. Like, damn, this might be the new velvet. Like Saint X was getting that was getting that shit too. Like, oh, this might be the new velvet. No, you know, because it's right down the street and everybody was going there. But truth be told, there would never be a new velvet. <laughs> <laughs> like there would never be another Velvet Loud. Like that's done, Dada. Like you got the shit on my shit right now. There, there will never be another Velvet Loud. <laughs> These niggas be seeing me with the shirt and the hoodies and the hat. They be like, dog, yo, where can I get my bro? It's 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 done. <laughs> like, you missed it. <laughs> you should have been there. And it 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 feels it feels extra better to say that to people that was there. And was very quiet when Velvet was going through what it was going through. And it's like, yeah, you should have been there. Because Velvet was there for you, but y'all wasn't there for Velvet. That's a conversation most people don't have. Got you. Got you, big boss. Damn. Look at that. Look at that. That's crazy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry I did this to you. I'll never let y'all get this fucked up again. I'm so sorry. I really need to sit the shoe and bleach for a minute to get all of this, you know, yellow out. I don't even know what I was thinking. I went to go to see, uh, who is it? It was some band. It's in New York. No, I didn't even wear these shoes. It was a different pair of shoes. But, um, whew, man, velvet will forever live on. Um, yeah, back to anxiety. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I learned how to quote unquote overcome my anxiety, but I definitely am grateful for all the life lessons that I've had the opportunity to be taught and learn again. Because sometimes I might need to learn the same lesson twice. You got to come back at the end of the semester with the little, you know, <laughs> with the quiz here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes. But I'm grateful that, you know, I don't carry that big of an ego. And I hate, you know, I hate even thinking that I'm ever egotistical in the situation because for what? I go through too much bullshit at home in my own mind for ever me to step outside and think that I'm egotistical. Like, you got ego. Fears, hopes, dreams, aspirations? Yeah, I got that. But nah. Have I ever had a panic attack? Yes. I hate to keep bringing this up, but the day that my mom died. Oh no, even at, oh. Damn, I gotta do it. I gotta do it, I gotta do it. Cause I don't like, right? I, I don't like talking about people. Oh, I, I, I know for a fact I had a panic attack leaving that bar after having this very distinct conversation with this one person who I don't even, I don't even consider a human being anymore. Yes, this I think this person is very hateful. I think they have a very like adverse spirit about them that I've even tried to investigate. Like, yo, why, why, what's what's going on? Like, why are you always playing music that's gotta shit on somebody? That you gotta make niggas feel like they ain't shit. Like, what's what's the deal, pickle? What's going on? Cause you know, we come into work, it's like you're supposed to be my teammate. 
we come in the work, we co bartenders, we working together. Like, what's the deal, Pickle? Like, we coming together. We're supposed to be together in this. It's supposed to be us versus them. We but we're on this side of the bar. <laughs> they on that side of the bar. We should be like this. I don't I don't think I need to have a pep talk with myself before I come into work, knowing damn well that this person who's supposed to be my teammate is going to get under my skin. Do something, and it's like I've already corrected you, I've already set a boundary, I've already said, Hey, I would no, I'm good, thank you. Hey, I would prefer if you did refer to me as this. I would prefer if you maybe use my real name, call me by my name. If you ain't gonna call me <laughs> anything nice that I don't think that I consider you, hmm, yeah, I don't like when you call me that. Please call me something different. That's, that's like plain and simple. I'm not calling you out your name. Why would I do that? You're my teammate. We, <laughs> we go together. Like, we supposed to be like this. What's the deal, Pickle? Like, <laughs> what is the deal? And that shit really, 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 really got under my skin. I'm sitting there, like, trying to understand. Like, why are you so mad? Why are you so angry? Like, what's the deal? But could never even, like, get to an answer. Yeah, big boss. Cool. Then, literally, it was a Thursday. I think it was a Thursday. It was Monday. It had to be a Monday. Now, for all intents and purposes, I'm not about to sit here and say that I am above reproach. That whatever words that this person decided to share with me at the time wasn't something that was sitting in their heart. Because, yeah, maybe I don't always come to work on time. Yes. I'm not going to sit here and say that I am... Perfect Dan and I I never made a mistake. No, yes, there are times that I have been late to work. I'll even send a message, hey, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be late today. Oh hey, I'm I'm sorry, I totally have exhausted all of my my outerwear and I have nothing clean to wear outside of my house. I need to take a moment and and I actually misjudged how long it was gonna to take to do my laundry. Like, oh yeah, I gotta be at work at five, I'm gonna start my laundry at 12. Thinking that I could get all of it done in one big, put it all in there, let it wash, put it in the dryer, let it dry, fold the bitch, pack it up, get to work. I get to work, let's say 40, 45 minutes late, not even an hour. But, yeah, you always late. And you want you want to be doing laundry? And I was like, wow, that was one time. Like you can't even count on one hand how many times I've done that once. Yeah, you always late, lady. Like, yeah, okay, I come late, but I also bring money in here. I've been curating, promoting, and doing all types of different events in here that nobody else has been doing. I've been generating a lot more profits and traffic in here in however many years y'all been in this place and i'm not saying that i'm big and bad that oh yeah look at me but it's like bro don't sit here and try to say as if i'm just on the wayside just riding on people's coattails like i'm not carrying my weight around here you ain't never seen no edm party at looking glass never seen no she had she was looking like neo tokyo in there Goddamn Batman Beyond intro, like in that bitch, like stop it, <laughs> niggas. <laughs> Can I have my props just for that, please? I, just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. Like if not, okay, cool. Let me let me let me go back to the days that I work by myself or with the people who I like working with. Just give me Monday and Thursday, I'll be in there. Trust and believe. But then for you to even sit there out your mouth to tell me that I have a lack of respect for a looking glass. That was the straw that, that was the, 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 the panic attack I had of a managerial position, if not one of the owners. Had the nerve to tell me that I had no respect for a looking glass. That I had a lack of respect for the place that I was going to 
to escape the reality that my entire world is falling apart. What are you talking about? Like literally, the last moment I even spent with my mother, oh, I'm sorry, Ma, I gotta go to work. She couldn't, like, honestly, that sits in my brain more than anything. Cause how could I have been so stupid? To not even have the awareness to know, like, this might be her last moment. Cause she in the bed, like, I mean, we just got her situated after having so many issues with finding like a, a nursing home for, for her to stay in. The current nursing home that she's staying in is, is, is like, is lacking in all, all dimensions of the care that they were promising to, to give her. We're paying them thousands of dollars. I'm paying them thousands of dollars a month and I'm watching her deteriorate in your, in your house. We're moving her out, like we gotta put her somewhere else. And that whole situation was such a, uh, like, like like nail biting like wow we got the money here can we pay y'all so that she can stay here oh no we got to do this we got to fill out these forms we got to do all right let's fill the forms out let's get the we got to get approvals from this place we got to get all this little introduction like okay let's do it let's like what do we have to do let's do it because right now she can't stay here we have her in the hospital they're trying to kick her out because they don't they don't they can't do anything oh there's nothing that we can do. She's taking up bed space. We're gonna, we have to charge y'all $7,000 a day just for her to stay in this bed after they dismissed her. It's like, damn, okay. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do? So boom, like by the grace of God, we was able to get her in, in, in a nice space in Silver Spring. It was decent enough. Well, I wouldn't say like really nice, but like for, uh, for like a a, a a holding period to, till we was like getting her into, it was a spot in North Baltimore that we was looking at, perfect. It had everything, all the bells and whistles. We was just trying to get her in there. She didn't even make it, bro. Didn't even make it. And I'm sitting there like holding her hand, like, yeah, mom, don't worry. I'll be back, I gotta go to work. I'll be back tomorrow, you know, help figure this shit, figure the, all this shit out. I'm good, I'm good on sweets. I don't need no sweets, bro. She's clenching my hand. I'm holding her hand too, like, what's up? But she can't even open her eyes. I can hear she's whispering. She can't even open her eyes, bro. She's just, I'm thinking she's talking in her sleep. In her sleep, I'm thinking, you know, she's having whatever dream she's having. Hopefully it's peaceful. I'm thinking hopefully it's peaceful. Hopefully you ride this dream out until I come back. I'll be back tomorrow. I left and went straight where? Where I go? I went to Looking Glass. And I worked that shift. And it was like, I don't even remember the outcome. I don't even remember how much money I made. I don't even remember how little money I made. I don't even remember that day. I just remember the next morning, bro, I have so, my phone is blowing up. My phone is blowing up. Even my own brother knew before I woke up. Like, mind you, I don't get off work until like two, three in the morning. So I don't wake up the next day till 11, N noon even. Sometimes I might get an extra snooze. Bruh, at 7 a.m., my phone is getting blown up. I'm just like, nigga, I don't got time for this. Like, who's, who's calling me? He's gonna have to wait, bruh. And that shit fucks with me because why was that ever thought in my mind? Bro, the influx of emotion as like people was apologizing to me. People were like, yeah, you like, know. My own brother knew. My own, I'm walking out my room like, yeah, bro, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. You're sorry? I mean, thank you. I appreciate it, but. Nigga, what? Hauled my ass all the way over, bro. I don't think I've ever seen a dead person like up close, like naturally. Normally you go to a funeral, you see them in a little thing, but this is after they've already been dressed, they've done whatever shit to make the person look like <laughs> who they supposed to look like, but they never really look like who they look like. <laughs> Bruh, it's like seeing the gray in her eyes. 
like the 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 stillness in her body, bro. I've never seen anybody else like that in my life. And for it to have been my own mother, I'm sitting there looking like, damn, bro. Like my own life flashed behind my own life flashed in my eyes. Every memory I have of this beautiful, amazing dragon of a creature who risked so many parts of her life just to make sure that I had a comfortable life here in America, but we could have been in Nigeria with it, bro. Low key, sometimes I, a part of me, a guilty part of me thinks that that's probably what should have happened. Probably should have held me down in Nigeria for a little minute, brought me back over in the States, and then, you know, I probably might be a whole different IO, but I only think that because sometimes, you know, I am ashamed of not knowing my full culture like that you know i don't know how to speak the language i don't know how to like all that extra shit that's over there people are like yeah you don't come to nigeria because of so and so whatever reason politics you know corruption like gangs all this other dangerous shit like yeah you don't want to go there but i always wanted to go because i mean what are you talking about Every Sunday we go to church. Everybody speaking Yoruba language. I don't know what the fuck they talking about. I'm just you know, clapping along to the songs. We turning up. I don't know what they talking about. But needless to say, that is just you know like a guilty thought of mine. Of sometimes I wish you know she had made a different decision. Being having raised me in Nigeria opposed to raising me here in the United States. But outside of that, bro, everything that everything that I am is because of her. Even now, I'm growing to learn like I should I should take myself more seriously because I know she wouldn't play about me. What I look like having somebody talk shit on my name for what? You don't know me? I'd be damned. The only person that <laughs> only other person that can talk to me like that she's gone so it's like none of y'all exist in my eyes where y'all should ever feel like that you have any like hold over me in my life that i'm like oh yeah i can do this to manipulate him to do like duh, if i say this you're gonna act like this if i do this you're gonna like nah there has never been any inkling in my body for me to go outside of my way to entertain somebody's bullshit like that's and I, I see it I notice it and like oh okay this is how you play it alright cause I've already I got 33 years of, of of indoctrination from the number one indoctrinator to tell me don't let nobody play about you cause I know she won't play about me so I'll be damned I will be damned but yeah like Panic attack. Sorry, I know it's a long-winded ass roundabout to <laughs> to where we was at, but like a panic attack, bro. Like that shit is never in my brain up until that moment. Cause how are you gonna tell me that I have a lack of respect to the place where I've shed blood, sweat, and tears for? Let me remove myself from this conversation right now before I say or do something that I know I'm going to regret. And more likely, I'm going to say something than do because I, I, I joust verbally. Like, if you, want to, if you want to go there, we can, we can talk. We can have a really extensive conversation. I'm like, guard. I'm guard. Like, I ain't, <laughs> ain't got to touch nobody. <laughs> I mean, but if you touch me, that's how I know. Like, all right, you're not even mentally strong up here. Like, what are you talking about? Why would you resort to violence? As, as something that this person would normally do. Because uh, it's like, if you're going to joke, if you're going to say a joke, and I say a joke, <coughs> don't get mad at me that I joke back because you said a joke. And you won't call me a scrub when TLC comes on. No scrub, play that shit religiously. Like, damn, what's, what's wrong? Why, <laughs> why is this like the, 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 the national anthem? Like when, when this song comes on, everybody is turned up. Why you play this shit every week? You play this shit every day. Or some Tony Braxton song that has to do with uh, some man fucking up or like, damn, you really listen, uh, all the music that you listen to has to deal with a nigga fucking up. You just listen to nigga hate music. You just don't like niggas. 
you just don't like men period okay well as a man and as your co-worker i would kindly just implore you to just have a little bit of patience with the 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 male gender because you got brothers you got a son these are all men these are all males i hope you <laughs> don't think this way of them you would never hear me listening to anything that degrades anybody to any i mean i listen to future i listen to kanye you know i i might listen to a little baby song every now and then every now and then you know i'm like dabble i'm not searching for 21 savage i'm not searching for money bag yo I'm not searching for any of these niggas. Bounce that ass, bitch. Clap that ass, bitch. Yeah, bounce it to the flow like a hoe. Like I'm not. That's I have a I have a sister. <laughs> Listen, no. If, if people who enjoy that music, I'm not like, like enjoy it right <laughs> near the grass. Like, <laughs> like listen to, to each his own. Listen to your music. If you like it, you like it. But if we have to coexist in this space for ten hours. Please leave that shit at home. Because I'm not bringing none of my hating ass music here. Not unless we having a party. Not unless we plan it to make the people that's here with us have a good time. Enjoy their time. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. Throw on your sexy red. Throw on your whatever wet ass pussy. Go ahead, do that. Throw it on. Have a good time. Knock yourself out. But wait till 10 p.m. On a, on a Saturday you sh We shouldn't be playing No scrubs At 5 o'clock The sun ain't even set yet <laughs> We shouldn't be playing No scrubs <laughs> Like come on bro I'm sorry Like that shit Like let's 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 look at Why we enjoy This type of music And figure out How we can Transition To Something that's You know a little bit more tolerable for the majority of people that's in here. That's all I'm asking. That's like I don't. I listen to Tori Moi. I listen to my fucking uh, Tori Moi. Come on, I got my fucking Tame Impala playing. Tame Impala ain't never said something nothing about shaking your ass. Come on, there's nothing disrespectful about what Tame Impala's talking about. Sweater weather. S sweater weather. Come on, bro. Listen, even for the simple fact. That somebody even came up to me and told me, bro, you have the best playlist at Looking Glass. I was deemed the best playlist, like, curator at Looking Glass. Like, come on. Now, the only person that really, that I believe is above me is Jamie. Jamie is the only one that I know who can constantly just sit, like, he'll play hip-hop all day and people will flock to him. They will sit there. They will just be downstairs chilling. Wherever Jamie is playing music, they're chilling with him because he's... It's all straight hip hop, old school hip hop too. Not none of that new shit. It's all old school shit, and it's like it's a it's a it's a vibe. It's like it's like a blanket of sound around where like people can just talk over it. Just, like it's nothing too nefarious. I don't want to see you for the simple fact that one of my best friends is your brother. Is literally the string that's keeping you <laughs> in my circle. <laughs> Like of people who I I, I I don't care to be around nobody who I don't know. I don't care to be around people who I don't like. I don't care to be around people who I know are problematic to other people. I don't I don't need none of that. But at the same time, I'm not one to just excommunicate everything. Like, oh, I don't fuck with you, so I don't fuck with this person. I don't fuck with this person. Everybody that's associated with you, I don't fuck with. No, I'm not one to do that. I'm not one to do that. But what I will say is that, like, bruh. Leave that shit at home. Please. Like, don't. I'm sorry, I'm about to hit the bottom of this thing. Like, like, don't, don't. Don't bring that shit here. Don't bring that shit to me, please. Please. Like, please. please? <laughs> like, I thought please was a, was a magic word. I thought if I said please, that I could almost get whatever I want. I'm not even asking for a lot. I'm just asking for you to stop disrespecting me. And then... Feel as if like you have the testicular fortitude to sit here and tell me that I have a lack of respect. That makes no sense. 
that's like that that there would be time that would cause me I had a panic attack at that moment because I'm like, bro, you did not just say that to me. You definitely did not just say that to me. I, what? You don't do shit in here. You 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 barely at the time, because I've seen her do some shit now, but it's like at the time you barely even touched the shakers. Somebody come in here, ask for old fashioned, the first response, oh we don't do that. No, you don't do that. This is a bar. We have all these alcohols, we have all these aperitivos, we got all these bitters, we got all these different ingredients. Make a goddamn old fashioned. Like this, there's nothing hard with making an old fashioned. We got sugar, we got hot water, we can make simple syrup. I, I brought simple syrup. Other people has brought simple syrup in there knowing how important it is. Like, bro, somebody's gonna ask for a drink that is gonna require simple syrup, because that's that's one on one. That's that's literally the, you go to school, you get the backpack, you get the, the 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 notebook, you get the pencils, you get the calculator. Don't forget the calculator. Don't forget the pencils. Like that's so it's like, bro, you're not even a real bartender. You walking around here with your britches up high, just saying anything, and you just think that because you big bad, you the boss. That it's just gonna fly. I'm sorry. I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, we don't do that. We don't take that. We don't take no. We don't take none of that shit sitting down. What? Okay. Because I could have been really disrespectful. I could have been really disrespectful. I feel like a lot of people don't really take the time out to congratulate themselves on the restraint that they show. Even you yourself, sometimes I be, I, I see like, bro, you know this nigga could fuck you up. Like, this man could fuck you up. Have some awareness. <laughs> like, have a little bit of, but the fact that you have the greater awareness knowing, like, I could fuck you up, but I'm not. Because what, what, what is, what is that going to prove? That, that I'm bigger than you? That I'm, <laughs> like, I, that's already a fact. <laughs> that's already true. And ten out, ten, nine out of ten doctors will tell you that <laughs> I'm bigger than you, that I'm stronger than you, that I probably will whip your ass. And it is what it is. Some people definitely deserve their flowers. You deserve your flowers, brother. I definitely will say that because there's been times where I, like, I want to see you whip somebody ass, but you don't. And it's like, oh, he did it. And <laughs> like, damn, son. You definitely should have whipped that thing ass. You talking way too much. Hey, Bringing the velvet days back, I'm telling you. like, There's a lot of people who need it. Can I see that knife again, please? I'm sorry. I don't want to take up too much of you. Your time and resources, but I need to scrape some of this, uh, this dookie stains out. Yeah, let's get that yeah. What are we talking about? Anxiety? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm venting. I'm 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 doing a lot of venting right now because I I don't talk about this often. I don't I don't like talking about it. I don't even want to give anybody the the inch to to run back to tell the story. Oh, I said this, or yeah, I said my name. Stop I'm so sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm so sorry, bro. Like this shit has been sitting on my heart for a long time, bro. And I, I do my best to just to remain stoic, man. Just let it sit there. Cause why? How has life changed for me since my mother passed away? Um, life has definitely been a roller coaster. Uh, it's, 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 but my shit strapped on. Like I'm in the ride. The shit's secure. 
we doing all of this. <laughs> like, <laughs> the wind blowing through it, we doing all of this. My hat almost came off. Wait, hold on. <laughs> like, it's, it's been a roller coaster. But for um, the lack of better words, it's definitely uh, been an experience as well because um, I've never had to live life without my mom before. So this is kind of like, you know, hey, now's the time. And um, sometimes I feel like between people in my family and a lot of my friends who know me, who've known my mother, that like, I've been receiving, like, I, and this is personally for me, like, I receive, that I feel that I've been receiving a lot of, like, um, sympathetic, like, um, notion. It's like, people have been very sympathetic towards me, which I'm very grateful for, but it makes the process a lot harder being constantly reminded um, we kind of passed that phase now because, you know, everybody's not asking me, are you all right? Are you okay? Like back, back then last year, couldn't even go an hour without somebody like, are you good, bro? Everything all right? And then, of course, they're asking that because they see it on my face that like, I'm, whatever I'm thinking about is not making me look like I'm enjoying myself. And I had to learn to stop doing that because I don't want people to keep bugging me about that because it keeps reminding me of the time that I went and held my mom's hand for the last time and left to come work a job that my boss is telling me that I have no respect for. It's like I'm trying to navigate those pathways to like a better, like, thought process or better like you know when you go through a maze the different doors you can walk through the door i want to go through i want it to be just like sunshine you know maze running running through this dark ass maze you get to the end you can see the, the field the pastures like windows 98 So it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm trying to figure out, or at the time, I was trying to figure out, like, how do I not let this resting grief face, because I was having resting grief face. It wasn't a resting bitch face. So how do I stop doing this so that I'm not constantly, oh, this looks very gunky. I don't want to cut myself. What the fuck? Oh, have mercy. Yeah, how do I um, stop myself from just looking like I'm not having a good time? Because that will give any and everybody a reason to ask me, hey, bro, are you all right? Because the answer is no. The answer, <laughs> the answer is no, I'm not all right. I don't want to even have to go through that. I don't want to tell you I'm not all right. I don't want to be vulnerable. Why don't you want to be vulnerable? Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of reasons why I don't want to be vulnerable, but I can't really bring them to the top of my head to describe it right now. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's like resentment. Maybe it's, you know, just not even wanting to feel the grief. Like just being done with it. Like, yeah, you know what, bro? Just don't even talk to me. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to, to, to explain to you why my brain isn't working at optimal level right now. Like there's there's a, a bug in the mainframe and that bug is grief. And that grief crippled me for a very long time. I would say that. But I was definitely fortunate to have the friends and family that I do have to help me out of that grief. And, you know, I can, I can't be more grateful, to say the least. But most definitely, I, 
I will say like it's gotten easier. It's and yeah, that, people have told me that like yeah, it gets easier over time because you know time heals all wounds. But for a long time, I was convinced this is this is the wound that's never going to heal. How do you how how does that wound heal? Your mom's gone. Your mom is in a whole nother state of being in a whole nother universe. She's in heaven. She's in wherever people go when they die. And you're just here. Like all the all the things that you hope to accomplish, you wanted this person to see it. And now they are not gonna be there. So what's the motivation then? If the motivation for you to succeed was so that the person that brought you all the way up to this point can see you succeed, and if they can't see you, then what's the point of doing it? I mean, of course, it's for yourself, but the motivation wasn't for me to just be successful. The motivation was, I want her to see me be successful. Now that she can't, it's like, all right, now I gotta sift through all of my reasoning. I gotta sift through all of the different files of motivation that I've had in my mind throughout my entire life to really figure out, okay, what do I wanna do with the rest of my life? Because now that is done. Like, <laughs> that's never gonna happen. So I have to really look inward and figure out, okay, all right, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? And I, I'm not even gonna hold you, bro. I'm still asking myself that. But on a more positive note, um, it helps, like I said, with you know where I'm working, knowing that I, I'm doing what I like and I enjoy where I'm, where I'm working, how I'm working, the people that I work with, not everybody that I work with, but most of the people that I work with, you know, the environments, the things that I'm learning. <laughs> The things that I've learned, you know, these are all like, you know, just new aspects of life that I just am just trying to try my best to be grateful for because I'm, I don't know where I would have been if, you know, this person didn't take care of me in my entire life. I would have known like what school I would have went to, what state I would have moved to, what field of of, of of education I would have been in, whatever what other talents I might have like developed, you know, there's so many things that make me who I am and it's all derived from this one person. And, you know, I'm still trying to wrap my head around you know, what what my future looks like. Because you really can't manifest something if you can't see it. And, um... It's... it's, it's I guess it, it will get easier over time. But I'm still in a... In a weird space. Because, mind you, this is still fresh. This, this coming September will be the second year. And I don't know how many years that I have left in me for me to just sit here and keep telling the story because uh, it sucks especially with the relationship that my parents actually have and or had and like where I am or the role that I was put in with all of this wow this shit is so gunky what the fuck was I stepping off the ball I know I wasn't standing on business couldn't have been business. I was standing on getting all this shit out. <laughs> Definitely was not standing on business. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck was I standing on? I don't know. I don't know. This shit is nasty, but we gonna get it out. We are getting it out. <laughs> but uh yeah I don't know man but, like like I'm in between my siblings meaning that uh I have I share the same father with my siblings but we all have different moms so uh I'm the third of four and me 
three and one have different mothers, but two and four have the same mom. And I'm I'm in between two and four. So, right. No, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. We didn't even find out about number one until like 2011. Like, Mans was already a grown man with daughters when we found out, oh, we have an older brother? <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's lived in London, bro, for his whole life. This nigga's been over the pond the entire time. It's like, bro, I have another brother? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Across the pond. Across the pond, man. Across the pond. What did I say, over the pond? Yeah, they say across the pond. Across the pond, my bad, I apologize. It's okay, it's okay. It's all right. Okay. But you see how easy that is? It's like, it's across the pond. You told me, I didn't know. Of course, I, I, I mean, even if I did think I had some understanding of what the phrase was, I appreciate that you, this, this is how they say it over there. And thank you. Like, I, I'm not about to sit here argue with you. No, that's not what they say. Like, what, how, did, how does the conversation move from there? Because now we're trying to figure out what the fuck they say over there. And then say you prove me wrong. What is, how am I supposed to carry myself now? <laughs> you know, some people, they don't know how to do that. They can't even listen to something and then take it for face value. Ooh. Um, my sister knows it because I tell her often that she's the sunshine of my life. And I'm proud to say that anywhere that I go. I mean, I'm sorry, what does my siblings, what do my siblings mean to me? And what my siblings mean to me more than anything is uh, they are my support system. They are... Uh, they're, 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 they're pretty much my guide of like, of um, just understanding the world. You know, I get a lot of information from my brother. I get a lot of information from my sister. Sometimes the information I receive from both of them may not always be congruent or congruent, however you say the word, or you know, exists on the same frequency, but I soak all of it in, and that helps me be a better me. Like, I wouldn't even be thinking of wearing no shit like this if it was for my sister, if it wasn't for my older brother who, when I first moved to the city, he had excess of shoes. Like, yeah, man, I, I don't even wear none of these shits no more. You want, you want to wear these? Bro, I had more shoes that I could even think, like, I had more shoes than days in a month. You know, growing up, I never really had shoes like that because life wasn't always that sweet, you know. With, with, uh, and I wouldn't even call it, I wouldn't even like blame it on like money or anything, but it was more so like values. Because where in Africa or Nigeria, where my parents were from, they don't value tennis shoes like the way that they do here. Like that shit is not like style, no. There's, no, there's nothing stylish about what you're supposed to wear to protect your feet. <laughs> Like, the shoes are supposed to get dirty because if you're a working, hard-working person, the shoes will get dirty. That's why I always uh, got the cheap shoes because I'd be at school fucking them shits up during recess. You know? Let me give us one more. One more wipe down. A little quick little... But um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna finish my thought here because uh, like I said earlier, my sister is sunshine in my life. My brother is really like a pillar for him because without him, you know, there's lots of things that, or a lot of opportunities in DC that I wouldn't have, that I wouldn't have had, you know. And uh, I will say sometimes it can be a little bit daunting because like, when I first started, like, you know, making ways out to the city, people would refer to me as so-and-so's brother. Oh, you, you what's the name's brother? Oh, yeah, you're, you're this person's brother. You're. So I was always little brother, trust and believe. I'm still little brother. I want everybody to know, like, I'm, 
I'm not big and bad. I'm not nobody important. I'm little brother. But the way that my siblings have like carried me through that whole process of like understanding what life really entails sometimes I would not be as optimistic as I am I probably would still be somewhere crying my eyes out swearing to the sky like why is life so shitty you know nah I got people like my brother telling me nigga life is what you make it you want to sit on your ass, sit on your ass. Don't be mad at what happens. <laughs> if you want if you want to do this, do it. Just don't sit on your ass. My sister will always tell me, hey, listen, if you want to do something, do something, do it with intention. Don't just do it because for the fuck of it. This is a day in my shoes.